Hello everyone, my name is Makai Brown, and here's a glimpse of the art slash architecture pieces that I've completed during my first three years of high school at Wasad. So I didn't finish my table of contents, but that's because this is still a draft, so I will go back and finish that, but right here, this is just an outline of what it will look like. I, you guys just seen my cover page, which was the first page. You guys are currently on a table of contents, which is the second page, and on the next page is my artist statement. Next. So, to briefly sum this up, I started off by saying what it was like for me coming into Wasad. I didn't really know much of what I wanted to do. I had an idea, but I didn't know much. And I say that ultimately I was a tiny fish swimming in a sea of lessons and opportunity. Meaning, I was, I felt very small because the environment in the school and everything that was being taught just seemed very new and, un and unorthodox to me. So it was just a whole bunch of stuff going on and I didn't know how to navigate my way around. But I then go on to say in the conclusion that all in all, after three years of doing things differently and putting in lots of effort into each of my designs, I'm a better designer today. I now view things in multiple perspectives and take on many different approaches to my designs. Ultimately, I am now a bigger fish in a larger sea taking on, taking on many more opportunities head on. So I try to show my growth within this general artist statement. Next. So, we're about to enter um, my freshman year phase. And the three pieces of work that I show are my isometric drawings, which is one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites was my ninth grade fundamentals of architecture. And I have a wooden stick figure that I plan on showing you. Next. So first up, we have my my isometric drawings. The reason, as I just said, this was one, this was one of my favorite pieces. I liked it because I kind of felt like we got to explore our creativity more with little restrictions, little limitations, and this was we had just finished perspective drawing. So we started out with one point perspective, and then we went on to two point perspective with Karen and Rodriguez. So this was kind of like the culmination of everything that we learned, and. Everyone had to do this project, obviously, but everyone's designs were different, but with mine, I tried to make mine as unique with my color scheme and my design of the buildings. I wanted them to resemble real-life buildings while also looking on lifelike at the same time. I like to kind of mix the two together because it creates this unique feel. And also, with the color scheme, whereas I seen that everyone was using warm colors such as like red, orange, and yellow, I wanted to do the opposite and use cool colors such as like different shades of blue and purple and I also added the color green in here to to put some emphasis on the cooler colors next so this here um it was it was a very fun project I think this was in the beginning of the year we had just started um modeling like building things i remember we did this one project with building blocks so this was one of the projects that we did around that time the process the what inspired me for this one was you know we live in new york city new york city is known for its skyscrapers so i wanted to do something very reminiscent of that but i knew it would be difficult to really make this big complex skyscraper with all these wooden sticks so i decided to make a simple one and have all the details on a lower ground level so that way, it doesn't look so plain and simple. It still has um, its own uniqueness. Next. So this right here was the fundamentals of architecture. As I said before, we had started like modeling our designs in like real 3D form with different objects, such as as you previously seen wooden sticks, and as I've previously said wooden block so this is just you know a drawing of what it was like but the significance of this project for me was it was kind of like in a way a graduation for me because we were like this was right in between the transition from us doing our art and our sketching and going into AutoCAD I don't know if you guys remember but in freshman year for the second half of the year we just strictly did AutoCAD everything was on AutoCAD and this was kind of um our last drawing project before we went into AutoCAD. So this was a great way for me to reflect on everything I've learned. I've utilized all the skills that I learned with, within the first half of the year into this piece. And I feel that it came out very good and it showed my growth. Next, please. 
So now we're entering sophomore year, which was with Miss Rivera, and we it was strictly AutoCAD, barely like it was very very little to to no drawings, no sketching at all, except for when we did our own floor plans, just to get a general view of it. But for the most part, it was just AutoCAD. And here we did our own floor plans, and we did our section drawings, and then we did in our apartment building floor plans. Now. I didn't upload the po the photos for my sophomore year because we all know what happened because we're not in school and because all of our work was saved on the computer it was very hard for us to get that now i do have it now but like i said before it is a draft so this is there's still a lot more things that need to be added onto it so junior year which was the most recent year this was um this year was a little different from the previous two because Whereas in freshman year, we did have sketching and drawing and art and half AutoCAD and sophomore year, it was stri strictly AutoCAD. This year was strictly about art and we had like one little project with electricity. So in this section, you guys are going to see my Utopian City model, my light circuit and a color wheel that I did. Next. So up first, we have my Utopian City model. This will definitely go down as one of my favorite projects in all three years because like I, like I said for the isometric drawings the creativity level had no limits everyone was able to explore freely with everything they wanted to so I've always been wanting to do something like this create my own city see what it would look like and, being, and I feel that for my first time I did a pretty good job I tried to incorporate um sea life I tried to incorporate that with um life on earth or well, not earth but like just life on the land but also mixed with like the city and an amusement park so as you can see the object to the left is very reminiscent of a squid i tried to make it kind of like squidward in a way but now but while also still making it a structure that looks real and then on the opposite corner you see this circular object it was supposed to be very reminiscent of a merry-go-round which is which is an attraction that every single amusement park you'll go to and the star of this show here is the first thing that you see which is this tall skyscraper looking building what i wanted to do was to incorporate a skyscraper to represent the city but also bring in that idea of an amusement park by adding a roller coaster so that's what i did i tried to have the roller coaster wrap around it and i tried to make it look like a building by adding like little windows and one thing I've noticed that the taller I made the building, the more I was able to, the more I was able to add on to my quote-unquote roller coaster. Next, please. So here is the light bulb circuit that Mr. O'Brien, he kind of took over this one. If you guys know, he's the electrical club teacher. So I never thought that I would be doing this, and I was never really interested in electricity, but trying it, but doing it actually wasn't that bad. It was pretty cool to see the outcome. It was pretty difficult at first. I didn't know what I was doing, where to even start. I was like, for the first couple of weeks, literally like two weeks, I was just staring at everyone else. I didn't do anything because I didn't know what to do because it looked so complicated. But once I got the hang of it, it turned out to be a very fun project. Next. So here was one of the last projects that we did in Moose and O'Brien before the pandemic hit and, closed, and schools closed down. We were working on the color wheel. So the project was we had everyone had to create their own color wheel. Well, so you could either do a regular basic standard one and just draw a circle with different sections showing the different colors, or like Miss Moose advised us to, to get creative and think of different objects we can use to incorporate the color wheel. So by default, everyone was thinking of like a tire and a car or like a bicycle wheel or a clock, you know, the, the, the typical stuff. So me being me, I never want to be like everyone else. I want to be different. I decided, well, no one is thinking about using a piece of fruit. I mean, you think of all these fruits. A lot of them are in spherical shapes are very circular and very colorful. So I figured I'd use that to my advantage. So I ultimately decided to go with the orange because when you cut the orange in half, you open it, you can see that it has different sections. So that's what I did, and I incorporated the color wheel into that. I would say the one challenging thing was getting the shade of purple. For some reason, creating the color purple was very challenging. I don't know why. I had, I had a lot of help with it, but it still didn't come out the way that I wanted it. But overall, I was pretty proud of the project. Next. So, in conclusion, 
I just wanted to say that overall my work has progressed from freshman to junior year tremendously. I am beyond excited to utilize my skills from the past three years to acquire new ones that will help me in my future. It took a lot of hard work and risk taking to help me become this architecture and design student I am today. Because of these past three years, I am open-minded and eager in an eager student who is ready to take on many obstacles head on. That's it. Thank you.